we are starting the climb of Wolf Creek Pass, which is located in southern Colorado off of Highway 160. It's kind of the space between South Fork, Colorado and Pagosa Springs. And it's a pass that you're gonna hit up if you're going like by Durango, maybe you're coming out to Mesa Verde or doing something in the San Juan area. So Telluride, all those kind of places, you might be taking this pass. And it's probably one of the scarier ones in Colorado. So we thought it would be worth seeing how we do it with our RV. We're driving a 2019 Jayco Seneca. So we are on a Freightliner chassis and um, Allison transmission. You can see we got an automatic transmission over here and you'll see some of the adjustments Jeremy's gonna make as we're driving. Part of what makes this pass so scary are the hairpin turns. It does close a lot in the winter too. It's a pretty dangerous pass and they get a lot of snow. So this is the snowiest area of the state. Wolf Creek has a ski resort and it actually has over 400 inches of powder every year. So they end up being the snowiest ski resort that we have here in Colorado. We're still driving along at a nice 45. We probably could be going 55 if the cars in front of us were going a little faster. This isn't the tough part. We're filming this in May, so you can see the river is really running and it's very full from all the spring runoff from the melting of the snow on the mountains. your last area for lodging. The Wolf Creek Ski Area does not have their own lodging up at the top of the mountain, so you'd have to stay further down here or in South Fork if you can find lodging, but the town of South Fork pretty much kind of shuts down for the winter. You're better off staying on the Pagosa side. So this area is for your chain hookup. Um, we generally don't want to drive in conditions where we do have to set up chains, but we actually have the auto socks. So in Colorado, it is legal to either have chains or have auto socks, but you do need to have one or the other between um, Labor Day and Memorial Day. So that whole fall, winter, spring stretch of time, you legally have to have chains or auto socks, or you have to have four wheel drive with good tread on your tires. So those of you haul in a travel trailer or fifth wheel or something, if your truck has four wheel drive and you have decent tread on your tires, then you can get away from needing to have the chains. But for those of us in motorhomes, you have to have chains or auto socks by law. And if you get in an accident or have anything, you will be ticketed for not having those. And probably found guilty. Look at the raging river. So we're still doing the climb. The climb part is probably not the hardest part, although it is rainy never fun to be doing mountain passes when there's rain or snow. But Jeremy's done this particular drive quite a few times. adjustments. If he needs a little bit more power to keep climbing up the mountain, he'll do that. Especially if 
one's a blind turn, like for example, what we just did. This upcoming turn isn't really that blind because it's you can see pretty well. But you really want to slow down going into the turn before you start the turn, so that when you approach the turn, you're in control. Otherwise, you may end up going too fast, and then you're going to start to fishtail out into the lane, uh, you know, the oncoming traffic. And if it's really tight, you're going to end up with a collision with a car if there's a car coming. So really try to slow. If you're newbie to it, try to slow into your turn. Uh, you can accelerate out of the turn because at that point you're going to start to see things. Uh, but going into it, it can be, can be challenging. The other thing to be aware of if you're a newbie, you know, and this goes for all driving, but uh, when the rain first starts, you know, that is the time when it can be slick. There's oil on the road, and that oil can create a very slick ground. the things that I'm doing as I'm coming up is I'm looking to see when my vehicle begins to stall. So right now I have my foot completely on the accelerator down to the floorboard. I'm in fourth and I'm cruising along at 45 and I'm not really stalling. I can see that my speedometer is just sitting above 45. I'm very comfortable. Uh, I feel very much in control. I don't really need to do anything else at the moment. Now I'm starting to accelerate. I'm going to take my foot off the gas slightly. Pretty comfortable at 45 to 50. I don't really need to be doing much more than that. You know, this is not a race. We're also enjoying the views, the waterfall, the river. So I take my foot off just slightly. You can hear the engines revving pretty good. I could choose to go up to fifth if I wanted to. But now as I start to go up to fifth, you can see it takes it easier on the engine. The RPMs drop 20 to 15 but I'm gonna accelerate a little bit faster. Now this is a flat way, uh, but the trouble is that if you're going downhill and you start to accelerate faster, now you have to brake more. And the more you have to brake, the more heat you generate in your brakes, the more problematic your brakes might be. Uh, so you generally wanna to try to brake. I always play the game of how, how little can I brake on the passes? How much can you use your engine to do the work and take the load off the brakes? to see we're climbing the speedometer starts to fall I'm in fifth I'm gonna drop to fourth that's gonna give me a little bit more power now the speedometer starts to settle a little bit it's not dropping quite as fast it's sitting there at 45 eventually I'm gonna to have to drop to third I know that because I've done this several times and I'm just kind of waiting for that moment in which I think it's necessary right now I, I know that I'm gonna be going downhill again here so I'm gonna just let it be for now sitting at a comfortable 45. Uphill on Wolf Creek, we're headed south towards Pagosa Springs. We do have two lanes going uphill, so there's plenty of room for folks to pass you if they're wanting to go faster. So you can see we're starting to accelerate again. RPMs are up real high. I could choose to drop into fifth there right away if I wanted to but I don't really need to because I know I'm gonna to have to drop right back into fourth as we approach this uphill. You can, still, you can see the speedometer now starting to stall again. RPMs are at a comfortable 22, 24.
summer months, you want to keep an eye on your water pressure and make sure that your, your water temperature, rather, and make sure that your temperature isn't getting too hot. You can't overheat. I've seen rigs do that. Um, generally speaking, if you got enough coolant in there, you shouldn't do that, but uh, just keep an eye on everything. So now we're starting to stall again. You can start to feel start to even hear the engine starting to stall a little bit and it's probably time now to drop into third so now as you hear that you can hear we get a lot more power our rpms went from 20 all the way up to 20 25 and now we're kind of topping off at 40 miles per hour so we're able to get that little extra power Place to pull off at the top. 
check the temperatures of their brakes. That's a very good thing to do. So now we're starting to crest. You can hear the engine is starting to accelerate faster. The RPMs are starting to rev up. That tells me that it's time to put it into fourth. So here we are at the top of the hill. Mountain pass. There's some little hiking trails. Well, maybe not this time of year. In the summer months, you can do a little hike if you want to stretch your legs. You can pull over, check your brakes. You can see these big heavy machinery trucks and stuff are doing that. Here's the really terrifying sky, uh, sign that you see. Hairpin curve, six miles ahead, 25 miles per hour. If you are over 26,000 gross vehicle weight, which we are. So he is down to second. stay nice and slow, we don't have to hit the brakes a whole lot. That's the goal. Sometimes they have rock slides and some other issues up here, so maybe check CDOT, the Colorado Department of Transportation, and just see how the road conditions look because they'll show you what it looks like before you head out for the day. Now here I have uh, my Jake brake engaged, right? This is exhaust type brake. Uh, here I have, I'm in second here. RPMs are about 25. I'm cruising between 25 and 30. like to say at 25 but honestly my second gear is going to allow it to go to 30 uh, and it just it's, it's, it can be really challenging I have to over brake to get right there at that 25 in this rig they do have runaway truck ramps so if you went to you know, push on your brakes and you felt like you weren't getting anything you know, there's always that out most of the time you're going to feel your brakes start to change before you get to that point. They'll feel spongy, not as crisp, and you'll know because you'll smell them. You'll know that you're overusing them. And there's trucks that run through this all the time much faster than this. I see it run down very, very fast. And, you know, obviously I can't judge if they have a load they need to del deliver quickly. But... Um, when you push a vehicle like that, that's where accidents and problems can happen. It's just too fast. But as you can see, I mean, I'm doing nothing. I'm not breaking. I have not braked once since the crust. Not one time. Ready to go if I need to. But by being in second and not being in a hurry in the right lane here, cruising right at 30 miles per hour, very much in control. And if I need my brakes, I'll hit them. also do is put on your hazards. I should have done that to begin with, but putting on your hazards can let other motorists know that you're going very slow, so as they approach you, they can see that. There's also a couple pull-ups along the way. I know when Jeremy did Teton Pass, um, he pulled over a couple times just to let things cool down, and that was our first RV trip. And we had no clue we were coming into Teton Pass, which is not for the faint of heart. But if you're watching this video, you like to be prepared and know what you're coming into before you get there. Right, and, and that's really more precautionary. I mean, with Teton Pass, for example, you can see my brakes here. These, these are the air brakes here. You can see they're nice and well charged, right? And the way that they work, of course, if you haven't used this type of a rig, is when they get low, then the recharger pumps air back into the system and you can hear it and then you'll hear it and sometimes it'll go over and the relief valve will open and you'll hear it go and spit but I haven't hit the brakes one time yet on this so I'm not depleting my air supply in the case of Teton Pass it was newer for me and so I was using the brakes probably more than I should have and I was getting pretty low and concerned what if it doesn't recharge so I took a few breaks just to make sure that they recharged. There'll be some 
people that are seasoned drivers that, you know, don't need that kind of advice, but there's other people that may be their first time.
starting to speed up again. Give it another little tap. Just get it to where I'm under more control. This particular section is pretty downhill from here until you hit that hairpin turn. And you just want to stay in good control from here. You can see the hairpin down there. Saw the uh, notice for tipping, you know, tall vehicles. Again, that's your center of gravity going too fast. You go to hit that turn and hit that hairpin turn, and of course, you flip the vehicle, and no one wants that. But if you're in control and you've been going slow the whole time, that really should never happen. I 
going up northbound, you're taking this the other direction, you might be able to get in there with your RV. Just show you the view out the window here. some folks go by that's really great I mean in some states if you have five or more vehicles they may even be able to ticket you if you are holding people up um, I don't really agree with that but uh, it's not my choice obviously Here's I think, uh, if you can pull off that's a nice thing to do I can't really see it from there oh yeah back there it's back there I'll, I'll, I'll put a pic at the end or some video because we've stopped there many times it's a beautiful, beautiful place to stop. So this is not pretty quite, much it. Yeah, no, not, not quite. quite. Okay. Yeah, not quite. There's a little bit left here, but um, but for the most part, you survive Wolf Creek Pass with us, and we can we take it off from uh, our hazards here and begin to make our way down. We've got some deer up here to the right. Accelerate now at this point you can see it's changed to 65 miles an hour. CDOT's letting us know it's safe to go ahead up to cruising speed. And down here you'll hit the, the end of the pass. And that's it, so nothing to it. Next time you're in Colorado, don't be afraid to take Wolf Creek Pass. Take it nice and slow. Thanks for watching.